Just about noon at beautiful Gulfstream Park. Welcome to Gulfstream today. Ron Nicoletti along with Abby Fuller. And we have a beautiful day here. Yes. Fast main track, a firm turf course. And uh, just going to be another exciting day here in paradise. And a uh, nine race card today. So uh, let's show you our exotic wagering menu today. First race, of course, we start each and every day with the early pick five. And that is a 50 cent wager. And uh, as it says, it's the first five races on the card. We're gonna to have the super high five it's going to start in race number two today because we have only uh six uh, six runners in the opening event so you need seven to run so that'll start in race number two and of course the big news here in south florida starting in race number four on a nine race card very important you see the rainbow six carryover almost a four hundred and sixty four thousand dollars and that's going to skyrocket well over five hundred thousand dollars as soon as the window opens up and then we end the day in race number five with our final pick five of the afternoon and that's the final five races on the card and a 50 cent wager so uh we're ready to get away uh, yeah get, get on the way, ready. Right? let's yeah, do I it i think so first race one mile on the turf and as we mentioned at the top of the show the turf course is listed as firm these are claim is four and up ten thousand dollars and uh, got a surprise just before we came on the air of a late scratch in here but early scratch for you because you're just getting it and it's that's uh, so you're going to scratch the number two horse in here southern stroll and also scratch the main track only number eight donegal hall and uh, i had the seven on top east Lakes look even better right now to me. Yeah. This one's going to face these 10,000 open claimers stretching out to a mile after stalking early. Rallying late to defeat the 16 three lifetime claimers going seven and a half furlongs. Uh, Jenna Antonucci is the trainer. Jonathan Gonzalez, this is the son of War, uh, War Chant, looks like strictly the one to beat in the open. Yeah. Seven to five on the board now, very early in the wagering. Right. Uh, yeah, I liked him for all the same reasons. You know, he won his condition last time out and a big improvement. And, and I'm thinking he's just getting better. Jenna's a good trainer. She does a good job. And, um, he stalked the pace. There is not now even less pace right. in here. But I don't think that really hurts him. He's a horse that looks like he wouldn't mind laying close to a, a slow pace. It's not like he's got to make some huge run. And that's going to happen today, as we mentioned, with the scratch of number two Southern Stroll in here, who's back. Uh, you know, we'll be running, uh, I guess, some other day. The other horse that we both used on our ticket was the six Steve. Love the name of this horse. I mention it all the time. Steve, very simple. Hey, yeah. Steve, how you doing? This <laughs> one moved to the Angel Kiros Bond via the claim. Goes back to the turf has had nine races on the turf previously with two wins in a third after rallying late to finish fourth that was his latest effort against 6,250 claimers on the dirt that last race coming just seven days ago and that was my problem with him a little bit you know he's back on short rest um the start before that I think he had about 12 days uh previous so you know he may sometimes you walk a horse into a race and it's okay and they bounce right along and he, he's really the horse who looks like he's going to set the pace in here now. Yeah, he's going to set the pace, and as we mentioned, with the scratch at a number two. So you see our selections in race number one. We're going to flip the page, go right to race number two today. This one, one mile and 16, claim is four-year-olds and up $6,250. Please note we use the first finish line here when we go a mile and a 16. Yeah. People just starting to follow. Gulfstream are not aware. We have two finish lines, and the mile and the 16 finish line uh, is the one that will be used here. It's the first one. Right. And uh, you just thought I'd mention that in there. Uh, we both went with the three in here Saturday special. This one beaten half length at this level by a repeat winner called Air Squadron. That was back on March 5th. He drops. He went up. He pressed the pace. He weakened to finish a distant fourth. That was against 12-5 optional claimers last time out. Bobby DeBono is the trainer. Claimed the two starts back. Orlando Boca Chica in the saddle today. Certainly looks like a logical contender in there. He's on the morning line at, uh, I believe, six to five or something like that. So low odds. Yeah. You know, this horse, I mean, he's a nine-time winner. He's got some speed. And uh, my, probably the speediest of them here is he drops back to the level that he was claimed from. Bobby DeBona does well uh, doing that sort of thing. He tried an allowance race, wasn't, you know, was too tough for him. But, um, you know, they're not going to waste time and put him right back where he should be really effective. Yeah, number eight, Peter Katzelboy, a winner at this level in distance, two starts back, is trying to bounce back after sitting behind a, a slow early pace last time out. He got parked 5-1 on the turn, and he failed to produce that late 
great rally going a, a one turn mile last time out so stretching out uh, you know maybe a horse that could bounce back a good spot to uh, bounce back don't know if it's uh, good enough to beat the number three Saturday special but right. certainly good enough to run in this spot sure he's been pretty consistent and it looks like he can definitely be counted on to come with the run and, and probably depends a little bit on how easy Saturday special gets it up there on the front well if he gets it easy up in the front end Saturday special is going to be special in that spot I close it out with the two storm warning a late striding type who can close and grab a share today of that trifecta or superfecta ticket it just depends uh, what kind of pace scenario up there and I know you closed it up with the number five in here Sir Sparky yeah I was looking for Sir Sparky to find a little bit of his old spark because you know this horse is seven five and ten on the board and he does have to se step it up from his recent races but I, I thought y you know that he could be a closing threat in here at a little price well, let's go to race number three this afternoon. Oh, wait, yeah, no, we take a break at race number three today. Of course, I see I was thinking it was an eight race card. It's a nine race nine. card. So we take the break after race three when we come back with the Rainbow Six. Good for you to remember that it starts in race number four. Six furlong claimers, three-year-old, $16,000. A couple of scratches in here. Number two, Capuano, and number five, Jet Prince. So we're dealing with a five-horse field in here. And a uh, horse that uh, I wanted to go back. I didn't put this horse on top of my ticket, but I wanted to go back and show you this performance of uh, the number one horse today. So you think you're a Romeo uh, who draws away and wins rather impressively in this race. I just thought it was a good horse that we can go back and look at. I did use this one on my ticket, and I I thought it was a pretty nice performance uh, at five and a half furlongs. He defeated 12-5 maidens. He won it, as I said, by five plus lengths. Uh, they're going to lighten the load. The, the, the connections have a Christian Navarro in there, so getting in light. Uh, and my question to you, horse that wins this impressively, stepping up uh, in competition to try $16,000 claimers, is that the horse that you would use on a ticket? And when I saw your selections, you did not. I did not. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not a big fan of stepping up horses in condition levels, too. Right. And, and, you know, I just, that's why I, I skipped him. Um, but he did win nicely. Yeah, and let's show you a stat on the, on the barn there, what they do with uh, that's Patricia Farrow does an excellent job uh -huh. over the last five years. First off the claim, a maiden winner last time out on the dirt, five for 19, 26%, 32% the the money, but look at that ROI, $6.17. Nice so yeah. if this horse runs like the last, which is why I wanted to bring this up, you know, and show you that the, the barn, there is statistics to say that the barn might be able to do this again, but right. I do think we both have the logic horse on top of our ticket and that's the four at uh, Danny's turbo and uh, this one dropping to the $16,000 level stretching out to three quarters of a mile he tracked swift early fractions last time out he rallied to finish third he was beating two lengths it was 25 claimers going for five and a half furlongs that was a sealed good track it was upstate at Tampa Efren yep. Lowe's the junior boy he does a great job when he ships down from Tampa and when he's here in the summer Eddie Castro handling the South Florida return on this horse yeah and, and this trainer you know is off to a good start 2016 I believe this will be his first start here at Gulfstream this year but he's at 24 percent so you know that's that's always in and this horse worked over at Gulfstream Park West so I don't think he's having to ship from Tampa I think right. he's probably got some down here right. if not all of them and uh you know fast fractions in the last as you said so yeah, yeah and I mean so you think you're Romeo who we talked about you you know it's a shame that we got the two scratches in here because there was a way to make some money with maybe the seven mass approval but sure looks like it's gonna help Danny turbo a lot in this race with those two scratches right. so now we will take that short break and when we come back we'll show you my rainbow six ticket almost five hundred thousand dollars in that pool we'll be right back
welcome back to Gulfstream today. It's Ron and Abby. We're going to look at our fourth race of five furlong turf claimer, three-year-olds and up, non-winners of two races in life. That claiming level is $12,500. We do have a jockey change. We want to put on the number one, make the runner Raul Mena on the number one horse in here. And as I mentioned, show you my rainbow six ticket. I'm going to toot my horn a little bit. <laughs> hit it yesterday for a $42 ticket. Not that I hit it because it was a lot of favorites, but I couldn't believe the consolation paid three hundred and sixty seven dollars nice. yesterday and it was a lot of favorites as we you you know three three two four two and two fifty seven dollars and sixty cents don't think it's going to be as easy today. So uh, my top selection in here was the seven starship. Thor, how do you see this race? Yeah, I, I picked him on top. Um, he's dropping again here for George Navarro, who's been really tough to beat. <laughs> um, he's got some dangerous speed. He caught a really, really fast fractions last time out, and uh, he was not far out of it. So. Yeah, I mean, he looks like the logical choice. And there's your decision. Uh, you know, he had three wins on yesterday's card. I'm talking right. about trainer George Navarro. This is a, a race do you think about singling in here you see Gabby, uh, Abby and I see I, I knew I was going to call you Gabby one of these <laughs> Abby and I here uh, you know have different second selections yeah. in here but it sure looks like the seven's going to win number five bridge of flowers as it's claiming text sliced in half steady inside bid produced the third place finish that was 25,000 two lifetime claimers at this five furlong distance so uh, you know horse that I threw on my ticket but I can understand having the six gunnery on the ticket I mean these are one of the horses I'm afraid of that I couldn't single the seven starship Thor on my rainbow six ticket right and and this horse does have speed as well as number seven so um, but at this level he had a nice work for his return been a, you know a little bit of freshen so um, I I I liked him. Yeah, they drilled him pretty good. 34 yeah. and one uh, and a, a bullet workout right. uh, last time out. So it looks like they got him uh, ready to uh, run at this abbreviated five furlong distance. The trainer's Diane Marici. Got Nick Juarez and, you know, ad nauseum. We've been he's mentioning how well. good he's doing yep. well here today. So you got to decide if you're going to beat Starship Thor in here, how deep you're going to go on your ticket. You also used another, you were with the Starship Angle in here. <laughs> you got did. Starship Explorer on your ticket too. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, this horse, um, He's come from off the pace, and that was what I thought. You know, we saw some races yesterday where the speed hung on, but they were really kind of in hand and, and up there pretty easily. This one, I thought, oh, if those first two soften each other up, that this horse could be a long first share. Yeah, and a lot of times, you know, the conditioners will look back and say, if we don't go up and run with this horse early, we don't have a chance. Right. And they end up setting up, a, a, a you know, a nice scenario for the horses that do come from off the pace. So I used Bridge of Flowers in second. Abby used the three and six on her ticket. So uh, once again, up to you to decide if you're going to single that horse to the hot barn of George Navarro. Let's go to race number five this afternoon. One mile claim is three and up. Non-winners of two in life. 30000 down to $25,000. And Abby and I are thinking alike again in here with Dr. Pham. And Dr. Pham, second choice on the morning line, making his first start since following his 12-5 uh, maiden score at this distance with a solid second place finish at this level and distance. That was back on February 4th. Uh, Kathy Ritvo has Luca Panici returning. This is a $200,000 gelded son of tis now so bred beautifully they had to geld them somewhere along the line right. looks like a logical contender in there absolutely you know his breeding said that he should have liked the turf right, right. and so they gave him you know they gave us some, some chances but he definitely improved on the drop and the surface switch yeah so he looks like he's a logical contender in there uh, the number five stone escape i have in second on my ticket and i'll tell you why he's making his first start against winners after edging clear to defeat $35,000 maidens here on February 26th. The trainer is Kelly Breen, and he has a gelded son of Malibu Moon working well at Palm Meadows. And I think this is a nice spot to bring him back to lifetime. You know, once again, uh, like you said, stepping up to, in conditions in here. Uh, a horse that, uh, uh, you know, on the morning line was third choice and over there. But I can understand not using this horse or using this horse on the ticket because of the jump from maiden into two lifetime. But you did go with the number two, and that is General Bellamy in second. Yeah, you know, this was an interesting race. I thought Dr. Pham kind of jumped out, and then I really thought it was kind of wide open. So it's, yeah, exactly. it's funny that, yeah, it, it apparently is. <laughs> and General Bellamy, you know, I liked his stalking style, and he was in with the big guys after he yeah. broke his maiden. I mean, that, that this horse was in, you know, the Withers and the, the Jerome uh, as a three-year-old. So uh, he's been freshened up. He's dropping in here. Some nice works to recommend him. Um, and 
and I'm going to throw out the last turf try back in January. Yeah, and he, I mean, he's a morning line favorite in there, and I was probably getting a little cute by not using him <laughs> on my ticket today. You so. are cute, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to go back and think that uh, maybe this is a horse that you add to your ticket. The other horse that I used on my ticket was the six, Bukate, who's uh, stepping up to face winners at a mile after pressing early, drawing clear late to defeat $30,000 maidens. That was going three quarters of a mile. Peter Walder, apprentice Carlos Hernandez, handling a stretch out in distance. So, uh, you know, like you said, looked like the seven was the logical one, but after that, you can yeah. go a lot of different ways. It's exactly what we did in here. Yeah. The other horse you used on your ticket was the number three, Bobby's Lucky Seven. Yeah, and, and I am gonna be looking, you know, when they come in the paddock, that'll be, you know, I figured I'd take a good look and see who kind of jumps out. But Bobby's Lucky Seven, long shot, of course, <laughs> a, d a decent effort at the seven furlong distance uh, for these type of horses. Throw out the last, it was too tough. Nice. He's dropping to a better spot and um, maybe sit just off the pace of five, six, So and the seven. key word here in this race, besides the seven, is wide a open. wide open. Yeah, <laughs> she knew what I was going to say. Wide so open. <laughs> there you go. Let's go to race number six, six furlong claimers, fillies and mares, four and up, $6,250 in here. And both of us have the number seven, Candy's Lady, on top of my ticket. Pray tell why. <laughs> well, Candy's Lady, six-time winner, and, you know, two of three in 2016. The source is hard to argue with. Um, we'll be coming, you know, at them late, uh, and Marcel Navarro also doing well. Yeah, he moved to the Marcel Navarro Bon Vie to claim it yep. for following that victory at this level and distance. That was back on February 17th with a slow starting fourth against Simba the last time out. But let's show you a stat in here. First off, the claim with Marcel. Navarro and low level claimers at this particular level he's 7 for 22 that's 32 percent mm -hmm. 11 for 22 in the money 50 percent in the money there with a positive return of investment that's first up to claim low level claimers on the dirt over the last five years and uh, an obvious stat I mean you don't see the exact numbers but you know how well like you said Marcial Navarro has been doing here and I think this is the logical choice in the race that's number seven Candy's Lady then I use the number three Samus and this this one moved to the Pedro Sabazo Bon via the claim. Turns back to three quarters of a mile. He tracked similar going seven furlongs on the seal slop. He tracked and finished third. It's a daughter of Flower Alley in here at six for seven money, six for seven in the money on this track. Uh, Tyler Gaffleone turned back to three quarters of a mile, likes this surface. It, nothing like a good hard knock in mayor, and we see a few of these in here have been claimed multiple times. Um, now, Samus, Sabarzo's had her three times this is his <laughs> third time with her and and so that's something a trainer does not always claim and there's time in between other people have had her when he had her she won at this level she's three three and three from a, a stalking position right. and Tyler on doesn't hurt her chances. No, and I, I think she's a logical choice and you can put a stamp on our trifecta here with yes. the number five. Skippy is back. It's back at a logical level today on the main track after failing. I, I didn't think this horse liked the turf at all last time yep. out. Drifting out, he faded again. 12-5 claimers going five-eighths on the turf. I think this is a better start. Skippy is back where Skippy belongs. Yes, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and, and you know, she's been claimed three times right. this year as well. Um, five, ten, and seven from 30 for 39 starts nice. she d has speed nice. and so did the two and eight in here so that's why i you know thought that hurt her maybe just a little bit right so we'll see how that race plays out we were in agreement in race number six race number seven this afternoon one mile and one sixteenth on the turf optional claim is three-year-olds and up fifty thousand dollars I want to go back and show you a race. Uh, I have the number seven, Valenti, on top of my ticket. And uh, the number also in there. There's two horses in this race that are running today. One of them is Golden Point, who's the three horse. And as I mentioned, the number seven, Valenti, uh, was the six last time out. Watch these two horses come in the stretch. And why I want to show you this race, Valenti is, as I mentioned, the six in here. But the seven, Golden Point, ran a really good race in here. And the point I wanted to make about Golden Point, I did not put this one on the ticket. And when I went back and looked at the race, I, I, you know, these two were ding-donging it to the wire. So they both, you know, finished second and third respectively. But the seven ran is good. The six might have had a steady just a little bit in there. So those two horses coming back this afternoon, Here's why I went with Valenti, who, by the way, will be listed as a gelding this afternoon. I don't know if it's first time gelding or it was a mistake last time out. This one is turning back to a mile and a 16th. 
chased the pace, finished third against that. You saw 50,000, two lifetime claimers going nine furlongs on the turf here. February 26th, but it's Mark Cassie. His barn has just been electric. This was a 550, is a $550,000 gelded son of Warden Ready. Training consistently for this assignment. I understand why you went with the number one level of spin because if you look at my analysis today, this was my long shot play today. Ah. And when I looked on, he was only five to one on the morning line. So uh, everybody was thinking light. Let's hear about number one liberal spin, who I think yeah, I used on my Rainbow Six ticket, and I'm glad you picked it. Ah, yeah. So this horse four, five, and six from thirty. Um Three, just shy of 50% in the money. You know, I, I like those horses that are consistently showing up. Uh, Six-year-old Kitten's Joy Horse, um, his effort after shipping from New York looks like, uh, you know, it was it was a good effort, and he's a good fit with this company. He gets Prado up. Uh, now, Juarez is on your horse, number seven, Valente, and yeah. he rode this horse before. I don't know that there was a double call, but no. I did notice no. that he probably could have ridden him back, and he's on... Yeah, Valen seven. yeah, and I mean, Valente, I mean, Mark, uh, Mark, Cassie, Mark Barnes, Cassie You're not going to say no. <laughs> yeah, say, there you go. She knows all that jockey stuff, <laughs> you see. Well, the other horse I used, and you used in third, I used in second. Here's to Michael. I, I really respect this barn. This one is making his first thoughts and showing a fondness for the grass when finishing third in back to back allowance races. But it was at Monmouth. It was on the Monmouth turf course a while back. Jane Sabelli has this son of Go for a Gin training consistently at Palm Meadows in preparation for their first start in six months. And I respect the connections and that's why I put this horse on my ticket even though it's coming off a little bit of a break or a six month break right and and I had him in there too seven from 13 on the board that's that's a really good percentage and he comes out of some quick races now Jersey is a fast that's a mammoth is like phew, <laughs> like a pool table um, but you know it's a it's a good course but he might be looking to steal it on the front end in here I had him in third probably mostly because of the the time away but right. certainly Jane Sabelli knows how to get him fit well you know we showed you the race of a gold important Valenti but the horse that's the morning line favorite who I did not use at all in here did you do have on your ticket is that number six moonlight bandit from the Safi Joseph jr. bond yeah yeah, um, this horse, three wins from 11 starts. Last time out was a, a win uh, for trainer Cassie and right. Julian Leperu. Um, he's probably not the quickest speed of these, but he does have some tactical speed. And, you know, he was claimed out of that effort. Looks like a, a nice claim. And Julian Leperu, you mentioned, rode him last time out. And Julian Leperu, around uh, the last uh, three weeks of the Gulf Stream he was uh, on fire. meeting, he was on fire on the turf. He figured out the turf course when it had switched from closers to speed or yeah. stalkers. And he was in the forefront of getting those uh, wins there. I used Doc Curlin in third, cutting back in distance, returned from a, a bit of a layup to finish a slow starting fourth against this caliber competition. Creston Mulhall, Elvis Trujillo in the saddle. So, uh, uh, you know, once again, not in agreement at all here except with the four horse right. so one of the fun races in the rainbow six sequence let's go to the eighth race in the first half of the late daily double six furlongs allowance fillies and mares three-year-olds and up the claiming level is it's an optical claim of six thousand sixty two thousand five hundred dollars and want to go back and show you performance of miss melinda not its last race but two starts back against a really impressive horse called stone task who went on to win the grade two uh, uh inside information where this horse was in before but i thought this horse miss melinda running second to stone tastic sort of pointed around as a major player against this level of competition yeah and, and i like the way she's running right. second she's um you know she's not staggering in there she's she's running on right. and you know i'm not saying she was going to catch her but she was running on she was the best finishing filly in there besides the winner yeah i mean stone task is one of the best fillies in the country right. you know especially it's sprint like i said went back and won the the grade uh, to uh, uh inside information in its next start yeah. so this horse just showing you on the class level while i think this horse is going to run exceptionally well in there and you were in a and we both have the number three pursuing fate who's cutting back to three quarters of a mile following an allowance score at the distance goes back chases the pace finishes fourth against this same caliber competition uh mike maker tyler gaffleone and this is a hundred thousand dollar daughter of insumation and if she won the race i would not be shocked right um you know she uh she's a versatile filly i like that uh she got the one other then condition with the stalking style. Um, Tyler gets back aboard her, and he was aboard for two of her three wins. Um, so, I, 
yeah, I, th I thought uh, they were on the lead. Yep. I'm not sure if she'll be on the lead in no. here, but she's got s also some useful works. Number seven, fond of Sarah, who I closed it out, turning back to this six furlong distance after a pair of solid, uh, uh, you know, solid pair uh, against this level of competition when she was second, going seven furlongs in the slop last time out, and third, going six and a half furlongs on March 10th. So she's been running okay. She's second choice on the morning line, and, and I think she fits with this level of competition. But tell me about the number two, more than a party. Yep, yeah, I looked at this race for a little while, and, you know, more than a party is one of those girls. She's got the most most wins of these horses. Um, there are some other speedy girls in here for her to deal with, um, but she's got two bullet workouts there. She's she's ready. Let's go to race number nine, our final race on this Thursday card. Seven and a half furlongs on the turf. Claim is three and up, non-winners of two in life, $16,000. One jockey change, one scratch. Jockey change comes on the two. Make the rider Lionel Reyes and scratch the number eight battle red in here. And uh, I went with the numbers. We have our exact flip-flop. Yeah. yeah. Soul Man, now a gelding, moved to the Oct Oscar Gonzalez Bon Vita claim after breaking from post 12. Dueling for the lead, finishing second, was only beaten a half length against this caliber competition, going a mile in the 16th. And, and I like the jock in here, MSCL Jaramillo. I think he fits this horse's running style uh, very well. So the number three soul man on top of my ticket. But I can understand, I've said this a lot today, we're, we're basically yeah. in agreement with a lot of horses. That number four, Crimson Hayes, uh, a second last time against yeah. $30,000, two lifetime claimers. No, that was back on March 23rd. This horse fits in there. Yeah, at this distance, I thought this horse should be a strong contender, not too far off of the pace. And like you said, that good second last time kind of pointed him out. To yeah, me. Eddie Pleasy Jr., excellent condition. I think spots the get cold perfectly in the nightcap. I think this is a perfect level, the two lifetime $16,000 level. And we are in agreement. We both had the eight on a ticket, yep. Battle Red, and we moved in six in. 52, he's reeling back at the same level and distance after yep. rallying four wide. He finished second. He was only beaten two lengths in that race. The trainer was is Lily Curtinez, Nick Juarez in the saddle. If things get dicey up front, this horse uh, proved uh, very yeah. well, nicely last time out to get beat only that two lengths. Exactly. He's been offering improvement and closing ground in the last couple. So I, I like that in here if there is uh, any speed duel on, up front. And as we always say, watch the early races yes. on the card here. See how the track and turf and everything is playing. The main track, the turf course. And uh, we'll be back in a while, but we're going to turn it over to our track announcer, Gay Prude, is going to give you all the updated scratches here uh, at beautiful Gulfstream Park. And we will be here, as I mentioned, throughout the afternoon. Yes. Good luck.